Welcome back to the Ultimate Kayaks YouTube channel. Thanks to those who subscribed already and if anyone watching for the first time fancies subscribing that would be very helpful. Over the past 18 months we've been working on and testing a new concept for balancing wing paddles and after that 18 months we are extremely excited by the progress we've made and the results we've seen. So what is the problem we're setting about to resolve? This is a standard wing paddle. It's been brilliant. Nothing else has been used in flat water racing or ocean racing since the late, mid to late 80s when this was invented. It's simply better than what went before. However, part of the design and the design that makes it more efficient, so it's not something you would want to change, is that when you hold the shaft horizontally, you can see that this blade sits under the line of the shaft and the weight of it, it sits below the line of the shaft. And the same is true of the other end. So when you put it down onto two parallel bars or if you hold it loosely in your hand, it will always fall to this resting orientation. This blade faces upwards, this blade almost faces upwards minus whatever feather you've got on the paddle. I've set this one up at 60 degrees right-handed because that's a common angle that people use. And so just for the example we're using here, that's, that's what we're gonna talk about. We really don't wanna change the design, don't wanna take that imbalance away because it's an actual useful tool that makes these more efficient in propulsion. But that orientation is useless to us. We can't paddle with the blades facing upwards. So we have to turn that blade towards us. And there's a force turning that blade away from us. We have to resist that force, overcome it, and then hold it in usable orientation. For this particular model, that rotationary force is 1.3 kilograms. The paddle itself only weighs between six and 700. So the turning force is twice the headline weight of this paddle. This paddle doesn't weigh six to 700 grams at all. That's only its mass, its headline weight. What we have to deal with when we use a paddle is the functional weight. That's the mass of the paddle plus the rotational force it requires to hold it in a usable orientation. Just so you can test your own paddle, if you hold the paddle loosely, just resting on your thumbs, you will fall into that resting orientation. Fingertip grip it between your thumbs and fingertips and turn it into a usable orientation and you can feel that weight pulling back against you. It's quite extreme. This model is more extreme than some others because part of the design, it's a Bratcher 2, is to crank the blades back further than normal. It's the same shape blade as a Bratcher 1, but it's cranked further back. And there's certain advantages to that that some people like, some people dislike. But there is a reason why this paddle is how it is. It's not a mistake in the brand. It's not a mistake in the design. It's just a necessary evil if you're gonna have a paddle that's this efficient. When we carry the paddle, we also carry it that way. We don't feel, and when we test weights between various different brands, we just pick them up in our hand. From now on, you won't do that. You'll remember that it has to be in usable orientation when you te test one against another. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. How will we go about it? So having established that there is that imbalance and that that imbalance puts a, a huge force on us that we hadn't previously been particularly aware of. What problems does that imbalance cause? Your immediate thought is, well, it's not too big a deal. I've been using the paddles for, and the same for me, for 20, 30, 30 years. It's uh, never seemingly been a problem to me. But the reality is that turning 1.3 kilos through 60 degrees every one second or two seconds, depending on what your stroke rate is, has a cost, a cost in fatigue. The reality is that holding this tight enough to stop it slipping through your hands and falling away from you into the resting orientation has a cost. We can take both those costs away, which leaves the energy saved doing those to do something else. The costs then come in terms of the obvious fatigue, but long-term fatigue and long-term gripping causes other problems. 
we're talking tennis elbow, we're talking wrist problems, we're talking compartment syndrome, tight forearms, cramping in the hands, tendonitis on the back of the wrist here. They're all problems that we've seen. If we haven't seen it personally, we've certainly seen it in a, our fellow paddlers. So all of those things can be resolved. Part of, a big part of the testing we've done with the product so far has been with people who've had chronic injuries in those areas, wrists and elbows, given them the solution to that problem and those problems have disappeared. That is something we are super excited about. But it's not just injuries, it's performance as well. Who on the last 50 metres of their 500 or 1000 metre sprint hasn't got to that stage where all of a sudden things go horribly wrong. You're losing your physicality, you're losing your strength, and suddenly you're no longer confident that that blade is gonna go in the water properly. Why not? Because you've lost your grip, over the, because you're tired, and the paddle gradually rolls away from you as soon as you let go. The moment you lose your grip, that paddle slips. So we get to that awful stage where you have to lean over a bit, you have to crank your wrist back, just to make sure that paddle goes through the water square. It's a terrifying time. We've all been there. You question whether the next paddle stroke will be the one that takes you into the water or does nothing at all. So that's the problems that it causes. How do we solve it? The way we've gone about solving the problem <coughs> is to sacrifice a little bit of the headline weight in order to reduce the functional weight by a lot. So we're going to add a counterbalance to this paddle that is orientated exactly opposite to the weight of the paddle blades pulling the paddle down so that we can balance it. As you would balance your car wheel by putting weights on one side because the other wheels, the other side is heavier. And by doing that, we smooth out the rotation of the wheel. We make the turning of the wheel easier. If you have a sword, it doesn't just have the big metal bit out this end, it also has a big metal chunk behind your hand so that you can move the sword quickly. If all the weight is in front of your hand, that sword will be very heavy and drop down and be virtually unusable. It's the same with this. If I pick it up from one end, this is a heavy paddle. If I balance it by picking it up in the middle, that's a light paddle. And that's just the longitudinal balance. What we've got here is a rotational balance. I've got a heavy paddle here. It wants to roll away from me. I'm going to solve that problem by putting a weight on. So just to illustrate that, if I put this weight on these parallel bars and I want to turn it, I have to turn it with a force of 1.3 kilos till it gets to the tipping point. Then I can let go. That 1.3 will turn it to the bottom where it will stop again. I have to reapply the 1.3 kilos, let it go. I have to reapply and reapply. It's impossible for me to just roll this paddle down this parallel bar. Once I bring in a paddle that's been counterbalanced by putting a weight that opposes this roll, this paddle is now balanced. So it doesn't matter in what orientation I hold it, let's just balance it on my fingers, I, this is a usable orientation. I've got that left hand paddle facing me, or I can have the right hand paddle facing me, usable orientation. I can have it literally anywhere I want and it will stay exactly where I put it. This paddle has no rotational force at all. So if I were to put this on the parallel bars, just try and lift the plant on the right hand side there, and I give this weight a little nudge, you can see that there is very little stopping that paddle rotating. That will roll and roll and roll until it hits the end of the bars. This paddle has now become weightless. It's significantly lighter in its functional weight than it was previously, despite the fact that we've added 200 grams-ish to the shaft itself. How do we position this? You have to position this exactly. It will be different for every manufacturer, it will be different for every design, it will be different for every feather angle, it will be different for every size. So there's very specific positioning of the counterbalance in order to counter the rotationary force. 
This solves an awful lot of your problems. When we're in this position and we're tired and we let go of our grip, that paddle will stay exactly where we put it. If we come to the other side, in order to turn and feather the paddle, this used to be a one and a half kilo lift or 1.3 kilo lift. Now it is completely weightless. We'll come from here to here with literally no turning force at all. And once it's there, it will stay there, even if I loosen both hands. It's always gonna be ready to pull at the right orientation, even down the last 50 meters of your 500, when you're absolutely spitting feathers and things are going horribly wrong for you. So literally every single paddle stroke you do becomes easier. And that is the beauty of featherweight. So we look forward to the next instalment, Look forward to the retail model coming out in the next couple of months, and then we'll show you what we've got. And until then, see you out on the water, and see you on our video channel for future episodes. Thank you.